And now, it's time for another edition of the 12th Man Fan Jam. With your host, the Reverend Moses of the St. Paul Island Church of Seahawk Positivity. Yes, thank you, Magic Voice. This is Moses, and welcome one and all to episode 326, the Playoff Aftermath edition of your 12th Man Fan Jam show. The show made up of Seahawk fans from around the world just like you, talking about your Seattle Seahawks. Over the next few moments we share together, we hope that you are entertained as we discuss your Seattle Seahawks as they prepare to take on the offseason. So sit back, relax, grab a desired beverage or scent of your choice, and remember, this has put a speed bump on the road to bigger and better things. As is the usual with every show, I am joined by the 12th Man Fan Jam Posse, a ragtag group of diehard Seahawks fans just like you from around the world. Uh, First, my partner in crime from merry old England, Matt. Hi, Matt. Good. Oh, that's lovely. That is, kids. Thanks. Yeah. Good morning, Moses. How are you? Wonderful. How are you, sir? Yeah, it's been a it's been a long and emotional roller coaster type of a day today over here in the UK. Um, it was uh, the funeral of Ian Ian Smith, mm-hmm. who was our president, and it was a fantastic day actually as well. At the same time as being a sad goodbye to a good friend and a a great bloke, um, it was also a day to sort of. Be proud and pleased to be part of a sort of blue and green family over here in the UK, the 12s, the UK Seahawkers. Um, We had a a great day, a great turnout for Ian. So many turned up, in fact, they couldn't shut the doors um, to the crematorium's chapel. So people were like spilling out into the roadway um, outside. And um, Dino and Nick and others, and they were the pallbearers, and and, and Ian was carried into the chapel on the backs of 12s. Um, And it was, you know, an emotional day. A, a sad day, but at the same time, uh, a day where the whole UK Seahawker family came together in uh, in memory of a great bloke. So yeah, it's been a, it's been one of them sort of days. <laughs> mm-hmm. it, it's just a wonderful, wonderful guy. We talk about him all the time on the show, and um, you know, I think we all have a connection with Ian. There's no question about that. And um, you know, it's just been a whirlwind few weeks. You know, I, I I talked to the guys before we started, and how. You know, Ian had, you know, he did a predictions for the show about a month before, and um, he was loving He couldn't wait to do the predictions. I, I'd be honored, my our kid, he said, you know, gave me the predictions. And one time I put the show up, and he said, I've been waiting for this all day, you know, just, but, you know, even before that, well before that, meeting him in, in Seattle many times and hanging out with him, just, you know, wonderful man. And just really, uh, uh, to me, today was a day to look back on Ian and celebrate. Celebrate that, you know, the world was a better place with him around he he made us better people he was a bright light no matter where he was um he was a wonderful that. young man yeah we we set up we we did exactly that we celebrated his life and it was mm-hmm. you know it was a celebration that he would have been very proud of um and uh yeah and so i've i've just rushed hotfoot from south london to get back here to uh, do the show and be here to do the guys. show but yeah i've left that? dino down there so i'm not sure what state he's going to be in tomorrow uh-oh <laughs> <laughs> well, do you know if you're listening, we're worried about you, but I'm sure you're coming out okay. Um, just to say, just um, one other thing as well. The, the interesting thing is, this was the first time I actually got to meet Dino. Now, this is going to sound really strange. Mm-hmm. Me and Dino live about 25 minutes apart, but we've never <laughs> met. Um, we've spoken to each other, you know, online, all that sort of stuff. We never actually met until today. And yeah, he's just as mental as I thought he was going to be. Oh, and then some. Well, <laughs> and then comments some. there. <laughs> I've got, I've that got about no, sums it up, really. So. Yeah, I've got no secrets. I'm not going to give away any of the secrets from today, but uh, yeah, he's a he's a he's a great bloke as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got plenty of Dino stories, but we don't have time. Um, <laughs> Will has ten times more than I do, I'm sure. Oh yeah. Yeah, and uh, speaking Most of Will, of which are not for attribution, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Likewise. Um, next from the state of Washington, let's go ahead and introduce our news hound. His 12th man editorials can be found on the SeahawkSal.com website. You know him as Shadowhawk, and of course, we know him as Will. Hi, Will. Moses, how are you? Wonderful, sir. How about yourself? Doing all right. You know, and all things considered, it was an easier end of the season than last year. So, you know, we're, we're improving a little bit. Yeah, true. <laughs> Truth, let a little salty taste in their mouth for next season. I'm okay with that. Uh, um, we are going to be joined by Dustin later, a uh, member of the posse, of course. Um, he is on assignment, and I believe if we all concentrate together and we clap real hard and we say our, our prayers, and maybe we can get Dustin in here very soon. But uh, also we'll be joined by uh, Statsman Mark through the magic of the recorded word at a later time. So uh, we, we will go ahead and start. 
a little bit about the show, let you know for those who've listened before, thanks for joining us. For those who are listening the first time, don't worry. We promise we'll be gentle, but be careful. The season is over and the posse is rather salty. So, the show is run like a real NFL football game. We have four quarters and even a halftime. Quarter one, Will will catch us up on all the NFL news. Quarter two, we will, uh, very reluctantly, but it's what we do every show, we will go over the game before, which is the Panthers' playoff game. Uh, and I have three reasons why the Seahawks gave up 31 points in the first half that nobody's really talking about. At halftime, we have the best Seahawks-themed play-along game on the internet, 12th Man Fan Jam Halftime Trivia. And quarter three will be our season recap. We'll just real briefly talk about the season in general. And then uh, in between there, I have a surprise for the crew. I don't want to tell them yet. And then fourth quarter, we're going to do something new called Truth or Bullcrap. And what that is, is I will give each posse member a statement and its opinion, obviously. They'll have to tell us whether they think that that statement about the future is truth or it's bullcrap. Speaking of truth or bullcrap, it's no bullcrap that I am happy that he's here. That's the truth. All the way also from wonderful state of Washington, He's here, folks. Dustin. Hi, Dustin. Hey. You know, hey. You, can't win the, you can't win the game in introduction, so I'll win the show <laughs> later. <laughs> well said. That's well said. You can't win the show in introduction, so by golly. You know, you, but you showed up, and we're glad you're here. Yeah, thank you. Glad to be here. That was a close one. That's all right. We got you here. Uh, but before we get going, we'd like to remind you like, share, and subscribe on the Seahawk Positivity YouTube channel. Contact us on this thread, comment section of the video, feedback, email us at 12thmanfanjam at gmail.com. Tell us what you think. Join our Facebook group, 12th Man Fan Jam Show. Lots of fun there. Uh, we're also presenting our awards in Super Bowl weekend. We will do our third annual 12th Man Fan Jam Show Awards, or the Fan Jammies. So please vote for your favorite in each category. By February 7th, 2016, the award show will be on that weekend, uh, we have the nominees up at the 12th Man Fan Jam Show Facebook page. You can also comment here or comment on a on the video or comment on the thread. You can tweet your votes, Seahawk Positivity. The categories are for regular season, Offensive Player of the Year for the Seahawks, Defensive Player of the Year for the Seahawks, Rookie of the Year for the Seahawks, Score of the Year for the Seahawks, and of course, Seahawks Game of the Year. You can go to Facebook and scroll on our Facebook page there are polls up right now, so you can go vote for those. Uh, please vote, and we'll have a winner. And uh, in a couple weeks, we'll do our show, and that will be our season wrap, which means season four is just around the corner, if you can believe it. All right. Hard to believe. All right. Well, let's get started with this episode of your 12th Man Fan Jam show, and we'll do news. Yes, news from around the NFL while you're out recuperating from the end of the Seahawks football season. Here's our 12th Man Fan Jam News Hound, Shadow Hawk Will, with the news. Brought to you by a sponsor, the Seattle Seahawks Grill. Slow to warm up, but when it heats up, it really cooks. That's the Seattle Seahawks Grill. Will, what you got for us? Hey, Moses, really quick. You're not going to make me wear a tux for our award show again next this year, are you? <sighs> you really complained about that last year. And so I have to think about it. I, I may make it casual, business casual this year. I'm not sure. Okay. Tuxedo t-shirts this then. Tuxedo t-shirts would be acceptable. Uh, okay. Will, I, I know that you were upset, but I don't know. I have to think about it. Maybe no tie. Would that help you? No, it couldn't hurt. All right. Well, we'll, we'll figure something out for you. I'll get you dressed in something nice for the show. All righty. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, uh, speaking of things that can't hurt, at least can't hurt Seattle anymore, <laughs> we have some Percy Harvin news. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Yay! which is appropriate because 2016 uh, marks the year that he comes off of our uh, salary cap for good. Yay. So we have now paid him our last dollar. The kids dig that. The Buffalo Bills who signed Harvin last year uh, may not be paying him many more dollars either. Um, as you know, he signed a three-year contract with the Bills last year. Um, however, uh, due to knee and hip injuries, he only played five games in the regular season. Uh, there were reports that he was considering retirement, but then they were saying, no, he's looking forward to uh, coming back and playing next year. But now the Bills aren't, really don't know what's going on. 
Uh, to quote uh, Director of, play, of Player Personnel Jim Monos, I can speak for my more. I can speak more for myself than our team, and I don't want to put words into the coach's mouth about what they think they might need. I think Doug Whaley talked about it, and I'll talk about. I'd like to see us get another receiver. Percy Harvin was supposed to be a big help for us, and we're still not sure what's going on. What? He's got to make some decisions here coming up. No. We've got to get somebody opposite of Sammy Watkins to be a real threat to that defense. I think that's a big, big key for our offense to take one more step. So, as uh, you know, all the glowing articles that came out of Buffalo about what a good citizen Percy Harvin was and how it was all Seattle's fault that things didn't work out here. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, no. Well, you know, no. I actually, it's funny because whoever signs him next. Is I've got their theme song, so when Percy comes out onto the field, that's right, he's broken glass, people. A little Annie Lennox for you. You never thought you'd hear Annie Lennox. I never think I'll hear a lot of things that happen on the show. A lot of things. But, you never thought that Annie Lennox would be part of the show, but there you go. Percy Harvin walking on broken glass. I did love him as the villain in Unbreakable, though. Yeah, that was a good role. <laughs> Where he's just walking, all of a sudden his bones just break. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. That's sad. Well, not he's really. Unre- so basically, he's just he's an unreliable person in the locker room. Who knew? Who I knew any of this? What? I know. Min- you could not show it. Seattle did. Wow. <laughs> now, now Buffalo does. Wow. <laughs> I, I, I need to find a job that will pay me that much not to show up. That does. You need to ask, you need to ask know, Matt right? Flynn. <laughs> What you yeah. just said. Well, Flynn shows up, he just doesn't do anything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what you just said, there was a character on Saturday Night Live that sounded like that. You go, you know, I couldn't believe it. I don't think the Vikings knew, or the Seahawks knew, <laughs> or the Jets knew, <laughs> or that the Bills knew. That's awesome. <laughs> but you, know, you know what's going to happen next. He'll sign for San Francisco. It will just be Chip <laughs> Kelly's greatest oh. moment. Yeah, that would be great. Chip you know, Kelly we had- and Percy Harvin, we couldn't be that lucky. I'd say we I'd love had- to welcome him back to CenturyLink, but you know he won't be playing. No, no, no. he won't even make the trip. No, now, we actually had a guy that we kind of did that to in my job once. He uh, well, was looking for a job like this. He was really ineffective in his job, kind of like Percy Harvin. <laughs> and so we basically, but he was in the military, so we couldn't do anything with him. You can't just fire him. And he was looking, looking to uh, retire. Don't in, they like, get promoted in, in a year? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was already my boss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> basically, they gave him a pager and said, "You know what? You go home. If we need you, we'll page you." <laughs> nice. The world's <laughs> quietest pager. Best job yeah. ever. <laughs> yep. I need that job. Page me when you need me. Then I go home, turn it off, and go to bed. Yep. Yeah, the, the, I'm just waiting. I think my, my dream front page NFL.com news screen is that Chip Kelly has reactivated Colin Krapenick, signed Percy Harvin, um, and the Sean McCoy is going in for tryouts or something. This is this is Oh, and for Johnny Menzel will oh, back them all up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Tebow's gonna be yeah, oh it's all it's all oh, brilliant. Come on, come on, it's a Chip. Brilliant you plan. Can do it. Will, do you have anything else for our brilliant plan? Well, uh we do have there has been a war of words between the Broncos and the New England Patriots in advance of their uh, conference championship game mm-hmm. this Sunday with several Broncos players saying that uh, Tom Brady is a whiner and Tom Brady <laughs> basically saying, yeah, but I like it when they call penalties on the defense. But, um, <laughs> New, Eng- New England Patriot tight end Rob Gronkowski may have uh, gotten the best of everybody. Um, Broncos cornerback uh, cornerback Chris Harris was on SportsCenter this week, and he said that the best way to tackle Gronkowski is to hit him low at the knees. Well, Gronkowski, on Twitter, naturally, uh, responded to uh, a message from a fan by saying, quote, he's heard their whole team is good at giving low blows. Oh. <laughs> Yikes. So, uh, game, set, match to Gronk on that one. No doubt. <laughs> Jerry Jones has just got excited as well reading that tweet. Yeah, yeah. yeah he did. <laughs> Glory, I'm talking to the Broncos. Oh, my God. I need some low blows. <laughs> I want my team to start giving low blows right now. Maribel, Maribel, lower that hole. <laughs> wow. Bless her heart. We give somebody a job for them low blows, I think. 
Tony Romo, get the drill out, man. You've got to make a lower hole. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a good one by Gronk, you got to admit. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was pretty a, good. And Actually, Gronk's I one like of the Tom few Brady. guys who can get away with it. Too, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. I like the, the Tom Brady thing you said, too. I'm like, well, yeah, but no, I like it. I like when they call penalties on him. That's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, that is. That is. <laughs> yeah. That's about the only thing I've ever heard that I liked about Tom Brady, to be well, honest. Well, they've with got you. to be used to all the haterade because that's all they get constantly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you bring it on yourself. Yeah. Well, they feed well, they off do. it over there. So. But uh, yeah, the heckling has just got to be nonstop. So, but I don't yeah. feel bad for him. No, I don't feel bad one bit. I love that you see all these like things. You only hate us because you like you're jealous of us, and we hate you because I hate you. Yeah. Because you're, you you're a bunch of cheaters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They they hate us because they hate us. No, yeah, we hate whatever. you because we don't want to be you because we don't want to cheat. Yeah. Well, what else you got for us, sir? Well, Moses, as uh, we have just said, there's not a lot of guys on the uh, Patriots sideline that we can cheer for. No. Nope. But I did find one. Uh, Patriots linebacker Darius Fleming, who, uh, as it turns out, played through last weekend's divisional playoff game with 22 stitches in his leg. Ew. Yeah, well, how he got it, it's kind of an interesting story. Uh, he witnessed a car accident a week ago Thursday, uh, saw smoke coming from the car, and the woman inside was trying unsuccessfully to uh, get out. So he ran over and kicked the window in so she could climb out of the car. Wow. Good for him. Now, it, yeah. it turns out that the car wasn't on fire. The smoke was actually coming from uh, the airbag that had deployed. Mm. And uh, Fleming actually left the scene to go get uh, treatment for his leg. But, yeah, so he uh, wow. helped to I... save a woman who was in a car accident and got 22 stitches for it. So, Darius Fleming, good for you, man. Yeah. yeah. It's the thought that counts, right? Just, just a question. Derek Coleman wasn't driving, was he? Thankfully, <laughs> no. Oh. Oh, yeah. I'm just checking. I'm just checking. I just want to be careful. Because when you said that you could see smoke coming from the car, I wonder what, whether or not, like, you know, like smoke as in, like, you know, from, like, some, some marijuana or something. That's right, where we're going. Yeah. That's where I was going for going. a whole different story for that. Like, like, like Johnny Manziel would be sitting in the passenger seat, you know, <laughs> stoking one away. Mm -hmm. Wow. A patriot you can root for. Can you believe it? You're not for That's, long. Kind, of That's kind of a cool story. Like. Yeah, you went about it all wrong, though. That's one of those where you're, you just you see something, you don't think about what you're doing, and you just react. That's, that's kind of funny to me, but yeah, that's uh, good on him to at least try, I guess. I seem to vaguely remember that story when it happened because I remember thinking, you know, wow, there's actually a patriot did something nice, yeah. and not Is for that, himself. Has he been with the team long? <laughs> my, my, he, he must be relatively new uh, he oh, was with the team last year I know that. When, uh, there was a statement from um, Belichick I think it went something along the lines of <laughs> no I, I think Belichick's statement was once more the Sith will rule the country <laughs> wow <laughs> Well, it was an accident, and he pulled over, and he hit the he hit his, the the window with his foot, and then she got out. That's all I'd say about that. And then he wouldn't release the injury update. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he, he's too. hurt a little bit, but he'll be fine. Yeah, he wouldn't he wouldn't go that far. He just like I'm not answering that quick. We should do the rest of the show in Bill Belichick voice. And now coming up on a 12th man fan jam. We have trivia. It's time. Everybody would just think we were stoned. My God. <laughs> <laughs> it makes you think they don't think that now. Um, well, we we need to do our drunk podcast at some point this week. Yeah, well, yeah. That'd be fun. Yes. No, here we go. Yeah. Yeah, I think well, maybe right some now? Skittles vodka might be coming <laughs> in the off season. Yeah. Um, that would be a good idea. That's always a great idea. Skittles vodka is a brilliant idea, folks. You know, there's nothing better than to... Do a podcast every fifteen minutes. You take a swig of Skittles vodka. I'm telling you, this is this yeah. is a great idea. Okay, taste in the rainbow. Don't drink the yeah. yellow ones though. Oh, yellow ones Lord. not good. Not good. No, they just they taste a little bit like ass. I'll have to tell you right now. I'm just going to put it out there. <laughs> How do you know what ass tastes like? <laughs> I'll say the okay, same thing. No. Well, there is a story there. Do eat pieces of shit for breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thanks for the show. Uh, thanks for the news. Anytime. And, and that note, we'll end the first quarter. <laughs> it's the end of the first quarter, bitches. Ha!
I can do that. I run this thing. All right, lots of shows still ahead. <laughs> we still play trivia. We talk about the Seahawks season. But next is the second quarter. We're going to have to look back painfully at the Seahawks oh. playoff loss at Carolina. But we'll do it. Can we drink the yellow Skittles vodka instead? We should do that <laughs> along with doing the show. We'll, we'll look back on the playoff loss right after this. You're listening to the 12th Man Fan Jam on the Seahawk Positivity YouTube channel. And now it's time for a 12th Man Fan Jam 60 second rant. You know you make me wanna rant, 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 rant. I don't want to get off on a rant here. Hello, everybody. This is Statsman Mark. That's the Carolina Panthers game. And, um, well. Let's face it, that did not go as planned. <laughs> um, and, you know, really, um, there's not really much to say on it. We were, we got ambushed in the first half, and we fought the, uh, the good fight for the second half, and um, uh, we made it close. Uh, there was a glimmer of hope that possibly we'd have one last shot to tie the game, but uh, alas, uh, that was it. Uh, um Carolina came to play, and we were uh, really uh, weren't in the first half. And uh, ultimately, what I take away from the Panther game is, while the Carolina went up early, fourteen to nothing, uh, two minutes into the second quarter, uh, the Seahawks panicked a bit, and I thought they would be able to regain their composure sooner than they did, and they they did not in the first half, and, and we put up a goose egg uh, before putting up twenty four in the second half. But again, that does speak to the heart and to the effort this team gives. This team never quit in that game. And um, I'm proud of the way they fought. Uh, Carolina's had an incredible season. My hat's off to them. And they move on, and uh, we go back home and uh, get to retool for next year um, in a season that uh, we can all be looking forward to. So that's my take on the Panthers, and this is Statsman Mark. Holy shit, it's the second quarter. Welcome to the second quarter as we take a look back at the Seahawks' loss to the Panthers in the divisional round of the playoffs. Second quarter brought to you by our sponsor, the Peyton Manning Forehead Cream Polisher. Covers a lot of area, which is a small amount. All right. I, he got a huge forehead, people. I'm he sorry. Has. He does. You can see it on Google Earth. It's incredible. Oh, my God. It's huge. It's gigantic. Trump is buying it to put a sign on it. Okay. Let's talk about that playoff Make loss. Make his forehead Nick. great again. <laughs> <laughs> nice will just won the internet everyone he just won a podcast that make his forehead great again all right let's talk about that playoff loss um Ugh. yeah we'll, we'll make this as painless as possible dustin what are your overall thoughts of the 31 24 defeat last week of the seattle seahawks uh it sucked um, all right pretty Good much, night, everybody. Pretty much sucked no <laughs> yeah that's uh that's my overall thought to be honest with you it sucked yeah um, they, uh, I wish somebody would have told them what time the game started. That would have been mm, great. That would have been helpful. <laughs> yeah, because uh, they weren't there in the first half. No. Just uncharacteristic first half. Stupid mistakes. Awful. I mean, yeah. They have 14 nothing in what the first, what, five, six minutes of the game or whatever it was. Eight after seconds. The, oh, that, yeah, whatever it was. It was ridiculous. <laughs> and, and just, yeah, it was, it, it, it was terrible. It was and, terrible. Uh, and then, uh, it was terrible. terrible. You know, they got down thirty-one nothing, and with the here's where it's kind of a cool thing, though. They get down thirty-one nothing, right? And everybody's pissed off, and they're you know dealing with it in their own way, and not happy, obviously. But everyone's like, you know, this team is so resilient. Game's not over. Yeah, <laughs> they could actually come back and win this just because yeah. of who they are and how they do it. So. Yeah. You know, stayed optimistic, and it came close. They almost did it in the end, but it was uh, overall not good. What I didn't like, though, is the comments afterwards about how they said they ran out of time. It's like, no, you had plenty uh, of time. Yeah. You didn't yeah, utilize yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> overall, yeah, it's just terrible. Bad way to end the season, in my opinion. It was just yeah. missed opportunity. Yeah, it, it, was, uh, it, was, it was pretty nasty, Will. Uh, thoughts? Well, you know, every time I watch a Seahawks game, I find myself yelling the same thing at the TV. It's like, just don't give up the big play. Don't give up mm -hmm. the big, just make them earn it. And 
when you blow when you give up two huge plays in the first six plays of the game mm-hmm. and then have an opportunity to uh get a get a fumble and negate that first big run and don't do it you know you just you put yourself in a hole that big of a hole that mm-hmm. early yeah it's just you, you can't win many games like that and you know k1 short was one of the few guys i was worried about going into this game and with him starting out basically ripping through our line like uh, toilet paper, it was just, you know, we couldn't get anything going. We spotted him 14 points before uh, half the crowd was in their seats. It's just, can you win the game in the first quarter? No, but you could damn sure lose it. Yeah. Yeah, well said. Um, Matt, your thoughts? <laughs> the thing is, it was it was a bit surreal, really, because... Uh, if you're not uh, people listening out there, make sure you go to the 12 man fan jam and follow our game threads when they come up, because they, you always get a little interesting tidbits of information on our game threads. So make sure you do that uh, when the next game is, which isn't happening there because we're knocked out. But the um, nice, nice plug, Matt. Nice plug. We're not going to do it anyway. <laughs> Bad timing, um, but nice plug. You got 33 yeah. weeks to remember that. Yeah, just remember that, everyone. <laughs> yeah. But the the thing is, you see, you see Moses with seven points ain't enough. And then literally, <laughs> before that post had time to sink in, 14 points ain't enough. Um, and then it's like, <laughs> 31 points might be enough. Um, yeah, I'm like, was... at this point, 21's going to be fine. Yeah. Yeah. 21 <laughs> looks like it's going to be all right, actually. Um, yeah. uh, it was, 28? I, I said, oh, yeah, you're fine. Oh, Step you're back. fine. You just carry on going. But the thing <laughs> is, is, is that when, when, you know when you see those films like Waterboy or, you know, Glee or whatever, where they make up some ridiculous thing where a team is losing by 48 to nothing, and then this some star player comes out and, like, you know, turns it all around and wins it in the last dying seconds... We sort of almost did that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's not how you win professional football games. That's Hollywood, people. Um, did did you say Glee? Well, yeah, because Glee, they did, they did. That's what they did in Glee. <laughs> Why are you surprised that I watched Glee? <laughs> I did, I did, I've you, all, uh, you made a football movie point. reference and then went to Glee. I was like, I'm, huh. It okay. can be done. <laughs> It can be done. Um, I'm just proving it. Um, but it's you know you, you know what I mean though. That's that's fantasy. That's a, that's a television film. But we almost did that on a professional field yeah. in a, a divisional playoff. <laughs> and the thing is, is is when you're looking at it and and when you see one sort of team for the first half, which you do not recognise. I did not recognise that first quarter, first half no. team at all. It no. was something alien. And then. Then I recognised the second half team. But you're right, you didn't run out of time. You, you had it the same amount of time as the other side. You just cocked up the first half. Hmm? But, did it, but did it change things? I mean, being on the other side of that, if we were Panther fans, which means we'd have to lose about 50 IQ points. But if we were Panther fans, yeah. and, I love and NASCAR. our team won, and <laughs> man, we, we killed them for the first half. But they almost came back. And, you know, they talked about the Giants being down by, what, 30 points and coming back. And they've had teams all year come back on them. I mean, I don't know. Do you feel better at the end of this game as a Seahawk fan than as a Panther fan? I know they won, but no. why well, you got me looking over your shoulder this week, don't you? Well, let, well let, me ask, let me ask you something. How did you feel in the first half of this season going into the fourth quarter with a lead? Oh, With yeah. the knowledge in the back of our minds that we've <sighs> yeah. blown so many of these. When's that shoe going to drop? How how are Panther fans going to feel if they have a narrow lead over the Cardinals going into the fourth quarter? Or if they have a 20 nothing lead and the Cardinals start a drive? Oh, here we go. Hmm. Yeah. But, I don't know, know. Maybe it, that's the key to success for the Seahawks next year. Just don't have leads going into the fourth quarter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then they don't have I mean, to protect anything. They can come back and win. <laughs> I know, but same token, I'm not. I'm also. I'm not taking anything away from Carolina because, as far as I'm concerned, they took they took op, they took advantage of those opportunities that we handed to them in the yes. first half. Yes. and they didn't. You know, they took every single one of those to the house exactly as they mm-hmm. should have done, yes. and we paid for it. You know, yes. good luck to them. Yeah. Really, I think you're rubbish. I hope they're going to lose again uh, um, against uh, the Cardinals this week. Um, but you know, I hate. Yeah, them. yeah I agree with you. <laughs> I'm. I'm looking forward to see Cam get beat sometime in the next couple weeks. Oh yeah. Um, I don't think I don't think it's one of those games where you can walk, you know, say how, oh, we beat ourselves and that kind of crap, like people like to do moral victory style. Like I think like Matt was just saying, it's you know, we made mistakes, they capitalized on our mistakes. They yeah. made mistakes, we didn't capitalize as well on them. Yep. That's kinda exactly. exactly what happened there. Yeah. Well, you know, there was actually more to giving up 31 points in the first half than a lot of people are letting on. 
and I know that you have people that get paid professionally to do this uh, examining, but you don't have to listen to them because I have right here the the top three reasons the Seahawks spotted the Panthers 31 points in the first half in the top three. So right from our uh, office located in Mayberry RFD, which if Mayberry is the Andy Griffith show, you need to look it up, kids. It happened in North Carolina. The top three reasons the Seahawks spotted the Panthers 31 points in the first half. Here we go. Uh, number three, it was the only way to make it a fair game. I mean, you know, spot them 31 and then, you know, make it close. Um, number two, it was part of a secret pre-kick deal the Seahawks made with Blair Walsh of the Vikings last week. <laughs> See, not a lot of people know that. But, you know, some talking going on. Hey, you missed this kick. We'll spot 31 to the Panthers next weekend. And the number one reason the Seahawks spotted the Panthers 31 points in the first half, the Seahawks playbooks were lost because the airline could not find Carolina listed as a destination on a map. <laughs> Which is wow. true. Kids, look it up. Carolina is not a real place. So that is why they give up 31 points. Of course, it could also be the 10 o'clock start time. It could also be the the um, the turf, which was horrendous. Because it very noticeably saw um, on that big run, the second play or the first play from the line of scrimmage, I, I literally I saw Earl Thomas come up and just slip. I mean, he was there, and he just he went, and his legs didn't, and he fell to the ground. And that he would have been, it would have been an eight yard run if Thomas had kept his footing, and Ma- he went Moses, right by Earl Thomas. Moses, and that it's was the that. same turf. It's the same turf for both teams. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they practiced on something like that for two weeks. Well, you know, put big. They probably on. have a training facility they practice on. They do, they- and they said it's a lot like that field. Uh, they said in the, in, in the game, they said. That Carolina's field is a mess, but that they've been practicing on a similar turf for two weeks. And look, I'm not, I'm just putting it out there. Yeah. They lost because they lost, but yeah, we'll talk about some of this in truth or bull crap. So I don't get too much into it, but let's not get into it now. Let's go ahead and uh, do our caption that picture and put an end to this game. Yes, capture that picture. We take a picture from the game the week before, and we add our own little caption to it. But before we do that, I have a special bonus caption that picture. I, I've always noticed that it seems to me like Cam Newton is always having this look on his face. So he's got the towel over his head, and he looks a little sad. And every time I see it, I think of something. And so as a bonus caption that picture, this this is the audio that I think of every time I see Cam with this on his head. So... Papa, can you hear me? Papa, can you see me? Papa, can you find me in the night? I think of that every time I see him like that. (laughs) What is that? I know that. That's Nelson Muntz singing Streisand. Oh, okay. I recognize it from somewhere. I don't have no idea where. Here's a little more hair on. Papa, are you near me? Papa, Nelson's my favorite character me? on The Simpsons, by the way. Papa, can you uh, help me not be frightened? I'm telling you, if you look at Cam Newton and you hear this, this is this is gold right here. I'm going to exactly. caption for that picture. Oh, well, please. Caption that picture. Proof that Tide can't remove all unwanted stains from your towels. <laughs> Ooh. Nice. Nice. Anybody else have a cap for that picture? Because I just kind of threw that up. No, right. uh, screw, screw Cam Newton. Uh, yeah! Uh, <laughs> like I got nothing. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move on to the other one then. Um, the real caption that picture that I sent out to the posse this week was this picture. And this is Bevel and uh, Russell Wilson looking at their. I don't know. What are these things? What do the kids call them now? Tablets? I don't know. Microsoft Surface Pro. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's yeah, what the kids call yeah, them. Yeah. Where's my royalty That's what the kids call <laughs> <laughs> The Microsoft Surface Pros. Um, Will, do you have a caption for that picture? And Coach Bevel, this game would be a lot easier if Pete had let us score in the first half. <laughs> I concur. Dustin, do you have a caption for that picture? Yeah. Uh, what time's kickoff? <laughs> <laughs> short and sweet that was awesome um matt caption that picture 
Don't you sure now is the best time for us to be playing Minecraft? <laughs> <laughs> There's so much you could do with that one. Here's the extra sketch. I have two. <clears throat> the first one was uh, is <laughs> is I'm going. Wait a minute www.firebevel.com is a real thing. Who made this? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> and then uh, finally, but it was a tweet from Future that read LOL that turned the whole game around for Russell Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> I heard they were playing Future songs during the game. Too. They were. Uh, I, I heard that too. I, I'm okay with that. I, I'm not. Yeah, whatever. You know what? That, that's gamesmanship. That's, yeah. I, I would want us to yeah. do stuff like that too. I'm okay frankly, with that. So. I'm okay with that. I wouldn't have known if they were playing Future songs because I've never heard one. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, thank yeah. you. I would. Me, me neither, but you know, that's just what I read. Yeah, yeah. yeah. On the interwebs. I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm not okay with, you know, a 21-year-old no-name linebacker screaming F the Seahawks and F the fans, which is... Especially you know, when you play for UW. Yeah, let's screw yeah. up a little bit. You know, that. Eh, please. We're, we're not in third grade anymore. Okay. We are, because we're, we're juvenile. We are. We're juvenile. You had bad language in third grade, Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> no, I literally would say F. I wouldn't, you know. Oh, okay. Um, all right. Now let's go ahead and real quick look at our uh, – recap our predictions from this game. Do we have to do that? <laughs> we would do it real quick. Um, <laughs> here are our scores. Of course, we all had the Seahawks winning. I had the score in reverse. I had 31-24 Seahawks, and it was 31-24 Panthers, so yay me. Prognostications were even more dismal. Um, <laughs> I had to give it to me because <laughs> there was one sack. But, like, everyone else was a big no, was a big zero. So I had one out of five. So I got it because I was the closest because I at least had a sack. Okay. Well, that's, not what, that's, right. that's not what Mrs. Moses says. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. I at least had a sack. I can't believe I just said that. All right. The, the things you didn't think you'd hear today. <laughs> Dang. No, I think we all expected something like this. Oh, my no, gosh. No, nobody expects the sack. <laughs> Inquisition. <laughs> No one expects the sack Inquisition. I've lost control. And see, Matt, you didn't want to go through these. Um, I love the idea that Moses thought he worse. had control at any point. Yeah, now <laughs> we go to game balls, which game balls are even worse. Balls um, and sex. Ooh. Yeah, Wilson and, and Lockett I gave game balls to just because Lynch, Thomas, Baldwin, and Chancellor were pretty non, <laughs> non-existent. So we'll move on to the scores. I, I won this week. Yay me for Yay you. Yeah, Will and Mark three, which means we have a champion, and that is Will. Woo! Oh, I was tied one in this week. Will with forty nine, Dustin forty six, me with forty two, Mark with thirty seven, guess with thirty six. Hey Matt. I'm sorry, you're cutting out now, Moses. I can't yeah, quite hear what you're you saying. Got, you uh, got nineteen there, buddy. Nineteen. All right. I get first pick in the draft. That's you get first pick in the, in the draft. I, I, I was going to ask what the procedure was. Is Dustin and I tied? Do we have like a cage match or something? Well, I or? think we would have. Yeah, we would have broadcasted something <laughs> amazingly that? juvenile to finish yeah. it. Um, now, man, probably the Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I can sell tickets for that. It's like a Sasquatch uh, taken on a leprechaun in a cage. At least. Right. It... <laughs> All we had to do is get Vince McMahon on the phone. He'd make it happen. Great. That's the best stand on a box to swing and hit. Uh, it's going to be great. We're so close to ending the third season, and I've lost total control. You never had any control. I know. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember when you had control. I know. What's control? Uh, well, at least I have a sack, and now it's halftime. <laughs> Holy sh! It's halftime. All right, time to get ready for the best Seahawk themed trivia show on the internet that you can play along with. It's time for another Canvas edition of. 12th Man Fan Jam Halftime Trivia coming up next. Hey, this is Matt all the way from Merry Old England and you're listening to the 12th Man Fan Jam. Yes, it's halftime, and welcome to another fun-filled edition of the best play-along seahawk theme trivia game show on the internet. It's time for 12th Man Fan Jam Halftime Trivia with your host, the self-appointed Reverend Moses of the St. Paul Allen Church of Seahawk Positivity. 
Yes, thank you, me, and welcome to the 12th Man Fan Jam Halftime Trivia Show, the game where you, the listener and viewer, can play along with the posse while I subject them to the trivia questions based on Seahawk opponents. This week, our contestants are the posse themselves, Matt, Will, and Dustin, and here are the rules. So here's how the trivia game works. There will be two rounds of questions. Each contestant answers one question each round. If they get it correct, they get one point. After two rounds of questions, there will be a final trivia question worth two points. If there's a tie after that, then the tied players go on to a special secret overtime question where the winner becomes reigning 12th man fan jam trivia champion and gets to have a special 60 second rant between the first and second quarter of the very next episode of the 12th man fan jam show. As an added bonus to those listeners on the Seahawk Positivity YouTube channel, the questions and possible answers will be displayed on your screen, so you, the viewer and listener, can play along as well if you wish. If you'd like to play along, please let us know how you did on the questions. Remember, there's no Googling, no phone a friend, and please, no wagering. However, there is a lifeline for each of the contestants. Before the taping of this show, my two charming Seahawk fan children, Mosette and Little Mo, did take this quiz. And if the contestants want to know what the kids said, they may ask that only once during the entire game show and only during the first two rounds. Now let's get ready to play 12th Man Fan Jam Trivia! Okay, the rules have been laid out, so let's get ready to play. Uh, One question for each person in round one, with one difference. If you hear this sound... You will be given a question about the third season of the 12th Man Fan Jam Show. So, mm. so that's our theme song, and I'm not going to tell you what it is. So, so, if we get that wrong, do we get bounced off the show? <laughs> well, I know you all listen to every single show from beginning to end without question, so it should be an easy gimme. So, I thought that was Guitar Hero. I thought we were going to play Guitar Hero this time. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, we're going to start with Matt. Matt, one, two, or three. Um, who's our opponent this week then? Oh, okay. Well, I... The topic in this round, two questions are about the NFC championship teams. And the next round are two questions about the AFC championship teams. Uh, no, are you talking yeah. about Okay, never mind, I got you. The current yeah, one. He's clever. He's clever. Yeah. Go uh, on then. I'll have I'll have a three, please. I have three. Will one. Dustin has two. All right. <laughs> Will. Sorry. Yep. Hang on, Your I got to get my hat. Oh, you got it on yet? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm good. All right. Will, Will's hat. Uh, your question is a football question. It's about the Cardinals. When the Seahawks beat the Cardinals in Arizona this year, who led the Seahawks in receiving yardage? Was it Doug Baldwin, Cooper Helfett, or Jermaine Curse? Some Morgan for you! Sorry, what was, what was the, the second one there? Doug Baldwin, Cooper Helfett, or Jermaine Curse? He's the model that plays tight end once in a while. Who had the most receiving yards in that game? And I will tell you that they are one, two, and three for that game. So, or you know, the top three are listed. I will go with Jermaine Curse. He will go with Jermaine Curse. Yeah, it's funny because Little Mo went with Jermaine Curse, and so did Mosette. Ah, uh, Doug Baldwin. Doug Baldwin with a mighty 46. Well, at least it wasn't Cooper Helford. Yeah, it wasn't Cooper Helford, at least. I know Matt would be He's a leading hey, receiver. Hey. You know things are going bad. Yeah. Okay, next hey, question. You cannot stop Cooper Helford. You can only hope to contain him. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I know Matt would love to contain him. All right. Yeah, he would. I got some uh, ideas on how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Dustin, your question, too. Awesome. And you get a 12-man fan jam question. Are you ready? Ooh, guitar hero. Okay. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, your 12-man fan jam question is this. In this season of the 12-man fan jam show, Moses gave his first top three against what team? What team did Moses give his first top three against? Was it the Bengals, the Cardinals, or the 49ers? My first top three. And I know you've got them all memorized. So this should be easy for you, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> excellent. <laughs> Moses does a top three. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Uh, your options um, are Bengals, Cardinals, 49ers. I'm going to go uh, Bengals. He's going to uh, go Bengals. You're not going to go yeah. Bengals. 
fully You're going to confidently go Bengals because you know because yeah. you listen to every single show. That's right. Yeah, Mosette and Lil Mo with the 49ers. You went with the Bengals. No, it, it was the Cardinals. Top three Cardinals. The Cardinal Richelieu was number one. I, I, yeah, Cardinal Sins. We, okay. Number three, I know. Okay, football question for mm. Matt. Matt, this is about the Panthers. When the nice. Seahawks when the Seahawks beat the Panthers in Carolina in 2014, how many times was Cam Newton sacked? See, it's a happy question. Was it one, <laughs> two, or three? How many times did Cam bite it against the Seahawks in 2014? You one, know, two, or three? He knew sacks three. would make you happy, dude. <laughs> three times. Better He's going to go three. He's going to go max out. At all. Yeah. Uh, Mosette, Lil Mo said two. Yeah, it's three. Yeah, three. Surprise, surprise! Matt's on the board. <laughs> Matt, oh Matt won. Will zero, Dustin zero. As we move to the AFC Championship. Uh, Matt, question <laughs> four, five, or six? <laughs> I'll go for question six. Six. Uh, Will? I'll go five. And that will leave Dustin with four. Yeah, I gotta set the tone in the second half. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna set the tone. You ready? Yeah, ready. I'm gonna be more guitar hero, baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh, uh, you gotta love it. I don't like the tone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for? your 12th man fan jam show question is this. Okay. In this season of 12th man fan jam show, the last drink of the week, the last drink of the week was given for what team? The Browns, the Ravens, or the Vikings? Which one was the last drink of the week? I did drink of the weeks? Yes, you did. Um, was it the Browns, the Ravens, or the Vikings? Um, I'm quite certain you did one for the Ravens, so I'll go Ravens. Oh, he's going to go Ravens. Well, you, you know because you listen to every show beginning to end. Yeah, that's why I was quite certain. Right. Yeah. Uh, Mosette also said the Ravens. Vikings said Little Mo. Oh, oh, Vikings Dustin. said Little Mo. <laughs> <laughs> the Vikings what? said Little Mo. They also said Little Mo. Okay, sorry. Little Mo said the Vikings. Mosette said the Ravens. You said the Ravens. Oh, Dustin. You got it. It was those Ravens. All right. Well done. Um, so now we go to question five, and that's Will. The Vikings said little mo. Um, the last time the Seahawks beat the Broncos in Seattle, is that overtime game? Who led the Seahawks in receiving yardage? Was it Doug Baldwin, Percy Harvin, or Marshawn Lynch? Hey, Moses, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just check. No, he just um, ignored your last comment. That's all. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> Wasn't sure if you were cutting out again. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes. What? Hello? No. Hello? No. Are we reaching? Hello? It must be someone this... there beside your, 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 your wife. Let me try again. Is this thing on? <laughs> United States calling. Are we reaching? <laughs> he hung up again. <laughs> <sighs> Mother, do you think the drop? Sorry. Um, yes. Last time the Seahawks beat the Broncos in Seattle, who led the Seahawks in receiving yardage? Baldwin, Harvin, or Lynch? Um, I am going to go with Percy Harvin. He's going to Percy Harvin. Moset and That's Little Mo went with Doug Baldwin. Gamble. Tell you what. Yeah, it was it was Ooh. Baldwin. Ah. Sorry. I think you have to be on the field to make <laughs> well, plays. Well, that was actually, strong game. he actually did play. Yeah, so. yeah, strong, that was one of his strong games. 42 <laughs> yards Ooh. receiving for Percy Harvin in that game, so he was actually there. Ooh, that's uh, crazy. Which, yeah, now, which leads us to Matt for question six. After that. He, he <laughs> was out for the next three games recouping. Yeah. Okay, Matt. Yeah. The last time the Seahawks beat the Patriots in Seattle. Yes. Uh, who had more turnovers? Did the Patriots have more turnovers? Did the Seahawks have more turnovers? Or did they have the same amount of turnovers? Ooh. Yeah. Turnovers. More by the Patriots, more by the Seahawks, or both had the same. What was the, what was the game? Did you say they beat this in Seattle? When the they Seahawks lost beat the Patriots it? in Seattle. 
You and I, I was were there, there for that game. Oh, oh see, I see. 2012. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, I was there for that game. So, you were there. I think we had the same. You think we had the same? Yeah. The, the same, only different. No. Mm -hmm. uh, Mosette and Lomo also think that they had the same. Yep, they sure was did. Was it two? Was that two? Two, yeah. yeah. Yep, Earl and Sherm both got interceptions, right? I believe so, and Correct. yeah, yeah. And, and here's your shocker, uh, Matt's two for two. All right. <clears throat> <laughs> I didn't Matt guess has that two one, points, Dustin has one, Will <laughs> has zero, which means our order for final question will go Will, Dustin, and then Matt. It is a number, gentlemen. The yep. closest without Three. going over will get the two points and be <laughs> champion. If you're all over, the closest to the number gets the two points. Here we go. All right, Will, you start us off, and here is your question. What college? No. Um, <laughs> in last year's <laughs> NFC Championship game against the Green Bay Packers, yeah. how many yards did Marshawn Lynch run for in that game? How many yards Ooh. did Marshawn Lynch run for in last year's NFC Championship? Ooh. I want to say... Hmm. 134. Are you going to say it? You want to, but do you, are you going to? <laughs> yes. One, 134. Will says 134. Dustin. I defer to the second half. <laughs> Too late. Oh, crap. Okay. Well, he said, what, 134 is what he said? Yes, he did. <sighs> We're behind for a good bit of that, I think. So I'll yeah. say, uh,. 110. 110. 134 and 110, Matthew. 110 and 134. How many yards did Marshawn Lynch run for in last year's NFC Championship game against the Green Bay Packers? 34. I'm going to go... I think he rushed... I think he was quite a lot. So I'm going to go... 135. 135, 134, and 110. The yards that Marshawn Lynch ran for in last year's championship was 157. Ah. Yes. Why do I even bother? Thanks. Why do we bother? Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Even Cheers. Thanks for playing. Putting up the other things up. Once again, you know, I haven't even changed. I know I didn't even change anything. And I didn't have well, to. I've got, I, I've got to go, guys. I need to release some Twitter messages and talk smack about how bad you guys are at trivia. I ain't got time for this trivia. <laughs> you have to do an expletive uh, lace Snapchat rant. Yeah, I've got to go do that now. There he is again, Hold folks. On. I'm just, Matt I'm just put... is our trivia champion once Cause, again. Because you know, you know Will's got that hat. Well, actually, funnily enough, I was sitting here and uh, I just reached over and picked up a towel and put a towel <laughs> over my head oh! and and now I'm winning mama can you hear me you mean you pick we need you know, a pick I'm not going to get that stain out Matt I'll get a pick I'll get you a oh, pick oh dear lord <laughs> alright <laughs> once again it happens an amazing action filled award winning version folks I swear to god I'm going to start like bring someone in to debug my he little computer room because he he's looking at my shoulder two. or something I don't know that camera I had fitted. Yeah, I yeah, I knew it. All right, another action award winning version of halftime trivia. Congratulations, Matt. Coming Thank up, you. we'll talk about the upcoming play. Uh, uh, no, we won't. No, we we won't talk about any upcoming game. <laughs> we're gonna talk about the season. We're gonna review the season, and then we're gonna play truth or bull crap, and all that right after this. <laughs> You're listening to the 12th Man Fan Jam on the Seahawk Positivity YouTube channel. Holy shit, it's the third quarter. Welcome to the second half of episode 326 of your 12th Man Fan Jam show. Uh, this quarter we're going to talk about the Seahawks season as a whole. They finished 10-6 and six and we're going to pass it off to Will. Will, what are your thoughts about the season overall? Well, Moses, I was actually thinking um, it reminded me an awful lot of the 2007 season, which was also 10 and 6. But, you know, back in, back in 2007, you know, Sean Alexander was finished. We found that out the hard way. And halfway through the year, Mike Holmgren had to make a switch, and uh, we went very pass-happy pass happy on the offense. 
And that was good enough to get us a lot of late season wins, get us into the playoffs, uh, into the second round of the playoffs, but wasn't better, wasn't enough to get us through. And then, of course, you look at this season, and we had another problem the first half of the season, the offensive line. We made changes to correct it, you know, just focusing on quicker passes, uh, getting the ball out earlier. And that was good enough to get us into the playoffs, but not good enough to get us all the way through. So you look at this season, and it's just you got to go back to the offensive line. I mean, that's what killed us the first half of the year. That's a uh, big reason why we dug ourselves such a deep hole in Carolina. And that's the number one thing we got to fix going into next year. Yeah, I agree with that. But also, I, uh, you know, I don't know. We made some changes also on the defense. Matt Carey Williams, that just didn't work at all, did it? Well, it, the trouble with that was uh, it was that it sort of it sort of forced Sherman and the others to sort of adjust their game to try and pick up the slack that he was creating. So, you know, that that that, that is a problem. I agree entirely with what Will's just said. Though. The offensive line really is uh, is the story of this game, uh, the story of the season. I mean, you've lost two, win two, lose two, win two. You can't. You've got to have consistency, and though that is a consistent result, it's not the right one. It's not what you want to see. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do. I have to go back as well to the first two games to talk about distractions in the locker room around Chancellor and the holdout and stuff like that. That was just mm. unnecessary. That's self-inflicted wounds. We haven't got, we haven't got, you know, there's not enough games in the season to inflict wounds upon yourself like that. So I hope, I hope that they somehow sort that situation out so that it doesn't happen again uh, uh, the, the following season. And the same with Bennett, that he also either just calms down or, or, or shuffles off. <laughs> well, and, and you know, Dustin, something I never did. Because when I always looked at the schedule, I always thought it was kind of overblown. You know, eight home games, eight road games. we got to play these teams anyway. You know, so it doesn't matter, I've always kind of said in the past. And I think I've kind of – this this season taught me a lesson a little bit because I don't know if you feel this way, but we start off at St. Louis, at Green Bay for their home opener on a national television, you know, game. That's that's a brutal start. And, you know, we were 0-2 before we could even get going – then, you know, we go to the Red Hot Bengals. We go and we play the Red Hot Panthers, the two, probably two at the time, the two best teams in the NFL, back to back. And all of a sudden, we're looking at two and four. I, to me, do you, do you think, Dustin, that that was a factor? And I mean, the placement of those games was kind of a factor getting off to the slow start, or were we just off to a slow start because of personnel? Uh, I think it's a little of both, but, you know, in every season, it's not who you play, it's when you play them. And mm-hmm. it, I mean, if you look at the Packers at the beginning of the season, they were on fire. They were tough yeah. to beat. And then you play them. If we had played them at the end of the season, probably a different story. It's just right. Uh, you play teams when they're hot. It's going to be difficult. And we just caught teams at the wrong time at the beginning of the season because we were still trying to figure out who we were and what we could do in dealing with the chaos of, you know, not having Cam Chancellor and having Kerry Williams and who is like. Kerry Williams is, uh, to me, like Therald Simon is to Matt. <laughs> Just not not wow. somebody I like. Yeah. Is your buddy sweet with him? <laughs> yeah, we're, yeah, we're really close. Uh, it just, yeah, it, it's just one of those things where it just, it wasn't in, in the stars this year, or in the dice, or however, whatever analogy or metaphor, whatever you like. It just, it wasn't there. And a lot of it is just that chaos, the, the way they, they create the team and that constant competition and all that stuff, it's awesome. And it, a lot of times it brings out the best in players, but it, when it does that, the positives, that's because it's kind of a controlled chaos. And this year it wasn't as controlled, and there was just things that kind of spun out of control that, that, was, that hurt the team ultimately, and it showed itself again in the, at the end of the year. So unfortunate. Uh, I so- yeah. I heard something uh, today, Will, that I heard uh, – our general manager say, uh, and you know something we never talk about is Pete Carroll and, and Schneider. What a, a spectacular, spectacular job they do putting this team together and just you know recreating the whole culture of Seahawk football. But that's for another day. But him talking about um, how this team has played more games in the last three years at this point than any team in the NFL, and that it's a night you know obviously you don't want to lose in the playoffs, but it's a nice little reset button for all of them. They can kind of you know, it, they can get the, the taste in their mouth they got from the Atlanta game. And, of course, we all know how that went the next season. But also, could they just, I mean, not necessarily a hangover from the Super Bowl, 
but just physically and mentally drained from how many games they played the last couple of years? I think so. Um, and the side effect from, I think, playing that many games is I don't think you bounce back as quickly from uh, tough wins or tough losses as you would otherwise. I mean, you go to you take the Minnesota game. We won because their kicker shanked what should have been an easy game-winning field goal. They were playing on the ice planet Hoth. Then they had to come back. That's true. That's true. They had to come home and then fly all the way across the country and play at a 10 a.m. start. Which I'm not. I'm not using that as an excuse. I'm just saying it does make things a little bit more difficult. And I do think that there was a little less in the tank uh, for them because of that. Because of all the games they played. Because of how physically demanding the previous week's game was. I think. And you look at guys like Earl Thomas, he's like, hey, I, I wish I could play in the Pro Bowl, but I'm going to take some time and uh, completely heal up. Yeah. So I'm hoping that uh, a couple extra works, uh, weeks worth of healing time will help, help them going into next year. I hope so, too. Uh, final word, Matt. Uh, the schedule, the 10 and 6 season, well, 11 and 7, you include the playoffs. Uh, you know, we, we made some predictions at the beginning of the year, and we're going to get to that in a minute, but... I mean, it was it was a it was a pretty uh, to me. If I describe this this in one word, Matt, it would be tense, because it just seemed like after we went two and four, every game was huge, and we couldn't afford it. And the mar the 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 margin of error was so minute at two and four that we had ten games where they played really well, but we you know kind of backed in. You barely made it in the playoffs because we were ten and six and we were wild card. I mean, how would you sum up this season looking back in a sentence or a word? Frustrating <clears throat> yeah. in many respects. Um, not being able to get going is, is, you know, these slow starts or letting it go at the end and not being able to see the whole game out to the end, either with a defense shut down of a... And we were still the defensive team of the year, for crying out loud, on yeah. points allowed. But we still let it go in the fourth quarter of so many of those games, which we should, if we could have back, then, you know, if we could have those games back, you just know that we would have done so many different things differently mm-hmm. um but frustrate i think frustrating is, is is the word i would use because you know that these guys are better than better than some of those results do you know what i mean yeah yes. some of those some of those results are just are just really you look at them and you sort of scratch your head and think well you know the rams to lose twice to the rams not just not just a, a, a in st louis but also at home um that, that's that's not right and i mean uh, it was an interesting division, and I, and I take my hat off actually to Bruce Arians and the Cardinals because mm-hmm. I think they've played a hell of a season. Yes, um, and I wish very them much. the very best of luck next uh, next week. Uh, this week, I agree. Dustin, a word or a, or a sentence to describe this season? Uh, it's kind of the same thing I've been thinking the whole time. It's hard to come up with a different uh, different thing, but I say just missed opportunity because these windows are so small in the NFL with the way the the league is structured Mm -hmm. that you have to take advantage of your team when it's good. And if you don't do that, that hurts. I mean, we had opportunities to win those games in the fourth quarter early in the season. We had opportunities to uh, take advantage of things in the playoffs. We just didn't get it done. And that Super Bowl is just, you know, it's out of reach this year, obviously. So this is only going to last so long. Can't yeah. afford to not be focused and not play. So yeah, it's too bad. Uh, Will sentence or a word to describe the season? I'm going to go with grind because yeah. it seems like we nothing came easy. I mean, yeah, we just had to fight for everything we got, and you know, sometimes we, it, sometimes it all clicked, but a lot of times we just had to. It was just a lot of work every step yeah. of the way. And it I was. It was a grinding it did season. Catch up with them. Once we hit two and four, the whole the next ten games were just a huge grind. I agree. Well, something that's not yeah. a grind. Something I didn't tell you guys it's going to happen at the end of this quarter is I did go back to our uh, opening season show, and right before I believe the, the either the Packers or I can't remember if it was the Packers game or the Rams game, I asked you all to make some mind blowing predictions for the season. Hmm. Something that would blow our mind about the season upcoming, which is now in our rearview mirror. And so I'd like to share those with you right now. These are the mind-blowing predictions by the 12th Man Fan Jam Posse from this year, from the beginning of the year. Uh, Andy, our favorite Canadian, well, one of our many favorite Canadians, I should say, Andy. He's up there with Nor- Bieber. Northern Hockey, yeah, well, yeah, he's up there with Bieber, <laughs> and uh, he knows how to feel about Anne Murray um, yeah. and Rush and Loverboy. Hmm. 
Uh, Andy said that we would go 14 and 2. And yeah, you know, just a hair off there, buddy. Uh, 10 and 6. You know, four short games off. Uh, Matt. Matt. Did you know what your mind blowing prediction was? No. <laughs> Was way off, probably. You said that Jimmy Graham would have 100 receptions and 19 touchdowns. <laughs> you said in Madden is a caveat. So. Yes, <laughs> it's a little bit off there. Yeah. Um, Mark Statsman Mark said that Lynch would have 1,800 yards and 20 touchdowns. Mm. Not quite. Um, Dustin, you you didn't have one, so you can make one up. You want to say they went 10 and six and hooray? I didn't oh, have one. No, I must, I, you have, must have been, been that you must have been absent for that show. I might have been working. Um, <clears throat> which is probably why Andy was there. Uh, Will, Will said that the Seahawks will have – now, that's pretty good. Seahawks will have the Offensive Rookie of the Year and the Defensive Rookie of the Year and Frank Clark and Tyler Rocket. Now, you might get one. I think there's a yeah. chance Tyler can make it, but – Yeah. I, I'm afraid well, Gurley's going to win it. But I, I did I did like what I saw out of those kids. Though, yes, for sure. yes. Oh, I think we all did. And I, I liked what we saw them this year. Absolutely. Both of them. Who's going to win it? Gurley might get it. Gur- it's going to be Gurley or uh, possibly Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper? Probably. Yeah. Oh, probably, yeah. Probably yeah. Gurley and Mon. And in all fairness, you know, Jameis Winston, I mean, they took that team from nowhere, and at least they, they had a fighting chance at the end. So I think he should get some nods, too. But – yeah, did like what I saw a Lockett, like what I saw Frank. I did the following. Wilson will have all-time personal highs in touchdown passes, yards, and quarterback <sighs> rating. So that's why That's why you brought that back. Up. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. Now, yeah. I did go on and say on his way to the MVP, but... Both, but no cigar. But, well, now, you know, I think he did get highs in touchdown passes, <laughs> yards, and quarterback rating, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it doesn't count, though, once you add that doesn't other count. part. doesn't so. count. You, 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 uh, you said about the MVP. You, you, you had had the old, and you put in the MVP. So, Listen you know. to yep. him. Man, yeah, I tell you, a tough crowd. Good I'm not, day, I was sir. impressed. Good I was day. impressed. Now I'm not. All right. Yeah. <laughs> well, whether you're impressed or not, it's time to move on to the fourth quarter. It's the end of the third quarter, bitches. Yes, coming up a brand new game we like to call Truth or Bullcrap. I remind you, you're listening and watching the 12th Man Fan Jam Show because there is no offseason. We'll be right back. You're listening to the 12th Man Fan Jam <laughs> on the Seahawk Positivity YouTube channel. Well, And now it's time for a 12th Man Fan Jam 60 Second Rant. You know you make me wanna rant, 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 rant. I don't want to get off on a rant here. Hello everybody, this is Statsman Mark with my 2015 summary. And um, boy, if you've been following the Seahawks for any length of time, this has to be one of the strangest seasons <laughs> that, we've, that we've ever witnessed. Um, Really, considering the way it started, considering the schedule we had the first half of the year, um, to be four and five and finish ten and six, uh, we did a really good job to get there and to once again qualify for the playoffs. This was a particularly tough season because we were on, we were coming off one of the most gut wrenching Super Bowl losses you can ever have, and so even though we did not go as far as we would have liked into the playoffs this year it speaks volumes about the heart and soul of this team and how they were able to fight just to reach the playoffs which for a great while was looking um for myself personally and i will not speak for others uh, to this effect but um i would like to see it doesn't look like it will happen i would like to see some coaching changes uh, i am not in the camp able and bevel i know our offense is ranked they've never been ranked higher but I, I still think that we, we can be better there. And no, I do not have a, uh, an alternative suggestion. But I just feel overall that um, it would not hurt this team to make a switch. But be that as it may, Cable and Bevel look to stick around. And therefore, we will make do. And um, hopefully, if we get some other things solved, uh, the play calling um, will add to next season and be more effective. Personnel-wise... Uh, a bunch of, I believe, 17 uh, free agents of any number of varieties. Um, some we would like to keep. Um, for myself, Michael Bennett, um, I think is a must sign. Uh, beyond that, um, it gets tricky. Um, there's any number of players that have been around a while, and and we, what happens there? Marshawn Lynch, I just read, is leaning towards retirement. And regardless, even if he were to come back, 
uh, we need to add depth at that position. Um, the bottom line is this. The outlook is still very good for this team. The cornerstone pieces are in place. RW, Sherm, the Legion of Boom. Um, Doug Baldwin's, uh, you know, had a big year, and uh, hopefully he's another one we will re-sign. But we are poised to make another run. This is not the end of this particular group's uh, legacy. Um, Carol's still coaching. Uh, we have a great front office, and so things are still uh, bright future-wise uh, for this team as we approach the draft uh, coming up here in a couple months. Um, this has been Statsman Mark. And now it's time for the fourth quarter of the 12th Man Fan Jam. Here to lead us through the final quarter is once again our host, the self-appointed Reverend Moses of the St. Paul Allen Church of Seahawk Positivity. Yes, welcome back to the 12th Man Fan Jam Show, fourth quarter, <laughs> episode 326 of your Fan Jam Show. This is Moses Belichick. Moses Belichick, and uh, I'm going to introduce this new skit that we're doing in the fourth quarter, like Bill Belichick. Um, it's called Truth or Bullcrap. And here's how it works. I will give the posse member, each posse member, a statement. They will have to decide if that statement is true or it's bullcrap. So oh, it's like, it's, a, it's like a debate for a presidential a, candidate. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Dustin's following along. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and for that, Dustin, you get the first one. Woohoo! Dustin. Uh-huh. True or bullcrap? The Seahawks lost Sunday because of a 10 a.m. start time. True or bullcrap? Bullcrap. All right. Absolutely 100% bullcrap. Yes? Hello? Elaborate, sir? I guess we're done. All right. No, I'm, I'm sorry. My headphones cut out. I didn't oh. hear. <laughs> Did you well, ask me I, something Okay, because okay, here's the thing. I, I, you know, I've made that trip, and I know, I know Matt has made that trip, but he's made it from, like, you know, another planet. I'm, I'm in the United <laughs> States from Indiana to Seattle. Mm -hmm. So I've made at least half that trip or a little bit more than half that trip. And yes, it is a big deal. The time zone change does matter. I don't care what anybody says. And I'm coming from the East side. And, if, east and side? My, my question is this, and I know the ratings would not allow this, but if it's not a big deal, then all they have to do to prove it's not a big deal to me is let the West Coast start times on Monday Night Football be 8 o'clock Pacific time. And let those guys play football till 2 in the morning and say, oh, well, it's just that's where you're at. That's the time you have to deal with it. I'm sorry. Until that they the, do that, I'm sorry. It's, it is not 100% bullcrap. But what's no, that, what's it, that, it is 100% bullcrap. They've, they've figured that out. They've had success on the East Coast. It was like one you. of those things where, you know, for a while it was a stigma and people were blaming that. But the bottom line is your team wasn't good enough to win over there. Yeah, that's what it, that's what it boils down to. At this point, Seahawks have figured out how to do it. They've had success there. They were good enough to win. They just didn't. The 10 a.m. kickoff had nothing to do with that touchdown in the uh, on the first drive of Carolina or that pick six Russell Wilson threw. That's absolutely nothing to do with the loss. Nothing to do with a slow start. No. Okay. All right. Well, Matt. Yes. Truth or bullcrap. Marshawn Lynch will not be on the active roster for the Seahawks in their opener this coming season. Truth or bullcrap? Truth. You think he's gone? He will not make the active I roster. I think he's gone. I think there's there's two options. I think for for the Beast. I think he's either going to retire, 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 proper retire, which I think is the most likely. Wait, is he going to retire, 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 or just retire, yeah, retire? Proper, well, proper retire. Yeah. The, the alternative is he goes to Oakland, which is almost the same as retiring in all but name. <laughs> um, so I think I think he's definitely not on our active roster, and you know maybe we should do a tribute show at some point to Lynch when he does finally decide to. Put oh, his, I would his, love to his do jersey that. up. I think it was great, yeah. um, like with I think, Skittles vodka or something. Yes, oh, yeah, exactly. that's, see, that's it's all together. Show. That would be a great show. But I think I think yes, I don't think he'll be on our roster. I think he will either have retired or have a transfer to somewhere like Oakland. I think all that's right. what he wants to do. To be fair, does anybody and, think uh, that it's for true. those American fans listening right now? A transfer. Is not what we call it in, in football. It's no, a trade probably, or a free agent signing. Yeah, That's a soccer you, term Matt was using. So. Which you probably can't. You probably don't spell either of those two things right either. But it's <laughs> that's. They put that's, re instead what, of er. Do you, do you spell transfer no. re? I mean, is that how that works over there? Because that would be silly. 
Except after C, yeah. Except after C. <laughs> I before A, except after C. Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're now to Will. Will? Well. Truth or bullcrap? Truth. Jimmy Graham was a <laughs> Jimmy Graham was a bust this season. Ooh, he got the tough one. Ooh, I can feel I a cannot, debate. I I cannot call that truth. I I I, I will you're not say go, that that's true. I mean, you're going to lean is, on bullcrap. I am. I am yeah. because <laughs> don't think oh, was 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 Jimmy Graham everything we hoped he would be? No, but neither was our entire offense for the first half of the season. Uh. And I don't. I'm not one of the ones that subscribes to the theory that our offense got better when Graham got hurt. Because our offense was doing pretty good with Graham against San Francisco and against Pittsburgh before he got hurt. So I, I don't think he was a bust. I think he's going to be an expensive piece to our offense next year. But I think that if we can pick up where we left off with our offense next year, I think Graham's going to be a big part of it. And he's going to have the kind of season that we expected him to have just one year too late. I, I don't think he was a bust at all. In fact, I think as the season went on, he became a much, much, much improved blocker. And if you watch some of those yeah. games right before he got hurt, he was opening some holes, believe it or not, on the and, line. I, and, I'm, re, and, and rewatch that Pittsburgh game too, because yeah. not only was he blocking well in that game, but there was that one drive where he had two – two catches on back-to-back third downs yes that were that key helps and got yes. us down the field to get a score in that game so, I, I am I, mean, I am as much excited about him coming back next year as anybody no doubt about it kind of rephrase a little bit what uh what Will was saying there he said it's um he was was it everything you hope for no but I would say that it's everything that you would expect in a Seahawks offense you're not getting Jimmy Graham uh from the Saints because we're not throwing for 5,000 yards mm-hmm. and all that you're getting a player that can be effective within your offense. And yes. when the offense was working, he was. And that yes. should have been the expectation. Does he help your team? Does he extend drives? And is he effective when the offense works? And he was. And that's really all you could expect from the guy. And so in that sense, I say he was not a bust. Good. Other than his knee. No, ouch. <laughs> <laughs> all right. One more round. And then we'll call it a, a show. Dustin. Yeah. Truth or bull crap? The Seahawks will renegotiate a new contract for Cam Chancellor. Ooh. Not should they, mind you. This is not should they. Will they. This is they will. Truth or bullcrap? Oh, goodness. Mm Mm-hmm. I I think it's truth. I think they will. I don't think they should, but I think they will. I think um, it'd be better to redo Bennett's contract Mm -hmm. and give him the money and make that statement because he showed up. He played. He mm-hmm. was there. He was disgruntled. Everybody knew it, but he did his job. Cam, on the other hand, took his ball, went home, sat and cried about it, cried about his millions. So <laughs> I would, uh, I wish they wouldn't, but I think they will because I think that uh, they're going to have money freed up from Marshawn retiring, and I don't think Okun's coming back and things like that. So I think they're mm-hmm. going to have the money to take care of those guys, and I think they will just to help, you know kumbaya the team a little bit because yeah they, they, they do need that so i i think they will too anybody think that's bullcrap i wish it was but I wish I'm, yeah, I'm with dustin <laughs> i think honestly i lost a lot of respect for cam chancellor yeah, the way he too. handled things and mm-hmm. like dustin i'd i would take the money and give it to bennett and just say look you don't like your contract fine you show up you work hard you yeah i agree you don't yeah. sit out especially you don't sit out you know, if it had just Knowing been the preseason, the if it had just been the preseason, nobody would have cared. But sitting yeah. out two regular season games, that crossed the line. But that, that's and me we, too. And, and we said that because we were sitting here saying, mm-hmm. if you want to sit out the preseason, actually, I don't mind that because that also means that there's less chance of you being injured. You know, I'm I'm happy for that, and I and we get the point, and we understand the point. But you've got to turn up on the first game of that season. You've got to turn up. You've got to suit up, and you've got to get on that field. Yeah. Uh, I believe we are to Matt now. We are. Matt, truth or bullcrap? Hmm. Bruce Irvin will not be resigned. Truth <sighs> or bullcrap? Bruce Irvin will not be resigned. Um, I, th- uh, I hope, I hope he is resigned because I actually quite like him. So I'll say you said not. So if I say bullcrap, that's right, isn't it? Yes, um, by bullcrap you're that's saying that's he'll the right be version. Here. Yeah, bullcrap because I think he, I think he should be here, and he's offered a, he's offering a little discount. Um, yeah. 
And I actually quite like him. I think he's, I think he's, I think he's done quite well for himself since 2012. When you know everyone was like, "Who?" When they did, yeah. when they did the draft, and nobody knew that. Fascinating was. story. Fascinating but, story. I actually, real, real quick, I actually tweeted him uh, when I was working at alternative school, um, an actual high school alternative school with a lot of gangbangers, and I tweeted him for advice, and he actually tweeted me back advice to them. And the one thing that he said was, "Don't surround yourself with yes men." Hmm. And I like yeah. that. I that's, mean, that's good advice. Actually, that's, that's great advice. advice. Yeah. yeah. To tell them but, not to surround but, themselves with people that just say yes all the time. I don't. I don't think it'll be a massive money spinner for him. I don't think it's going to. But then I don't think he has a great deal of value on the open market either. I think that's the other thing. I don't know why I think that because I think he's a damn good player. Yeah. But I think. I think. I think he'll be back with us on a on a you know a reasonably small ish. I right. certainly hope you're right. Contract. No, I, I think I'm. Right. I'm going to go with truth on this one. I don't think he's back next year. Oh, and okay. S- simply because it's how the Seahawks use him. Versus how he could be used and his potential, uh, how he with how he could be used. There's not a lot of pass rushers out there available this year, from what I understand. Yeah, and he's a guy if you put him in price. the right spots, he can pass rush. He can get yes, it done. Yes, he have like ten is for his rookie season. Is that what it was? Eight. Uh, eight is yeah, that? Yeah, rookie season. Yeah. And then uh, they kind of moved him out of position, and the Seahawks have been throwing him here, throwing him there, trying him this spot, that spot. Yeah. I th- I think if he finds uh, the right team and the right scheme. And they recognize his potential in that scheme. He's going to get paid. I think that uh, the hometown discount thing is nice, and I'm glad he said that. But he said that in an exit interview, um, leaving the building, you know, to Pete, Pete and John, and then he said it again to whoever was interviewing him on the radio before he talked to his agent about it. Once he's getting, <laughs> <laughs> once he's getting that money dangled in front of him, because I, I, I just have a feeling it's going to be much larger than what Matt's anticipating, at least, and maybe what Bruce is anticipating, that he's going to take the money and run. I don't think he's going to be back. Yeah, I got to agree with Dustin on this one just because I look at Bruce Irvin and I see a guy who would be a perfect fit as a classic 3-4 outside linebacker, uh, yeah. pass rushing outside yeah. linebacker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it wouldn't surprise me if one of the 3-4 teams in the league, because I, I, I think even if we do keep him, uh, he's going to free agency and then he's going to test the market. I don't mm-hmm. think we get a deal done before free agency starts. And I think one of the 3-4 teams is going to snap him up. He kind of already alluded to that yeah. because he said if the Seahawks match, which implies yeah. that he's going to free agency and he's going to test the market. So. Well, sure. And he should to see what his and value why is. Why wouldn't he yeah. test the yeah. Yeah. And he should. Off, so. yeah. And, I, and, you know, real quick, I don't want to get too much into this, but this whole Jermaine Curse thing where you have you Bruce Irvin said I'll take a discount. I completely understand and respect that. Jermaine Curse said he's going to go get the money. I, I totally respect that, too. I You know yeah. what? You do, you do you, man. And – do me a favor and call Golden Tate and see if you don't, you know, if he doesn't mind sitting home in January. But he may say, "Look, I'm getting paid, and you know, I'm sitting home in January, but I'm getting paid. That may be the thing to do." You do you, man. I respect it. And, and uh, for, last for one, Curse, sorry, real quick for Curse, oh yeah. this is his one shot at a uh, big contract. Exactly. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. he's got to exactly. take advantage. And you know, exactly. this, this is a good year to do it too because you know they the stigma about the Seahawks receiving core is that they're not that good. They're pedestrian. They're just, yeah. you know, helped out by the running game, blah, blah, blah. Well, this year he made some big plays, and he shows up big actually in the playoffs late a lot of times, He, you know, game-winning touchdowns. But as a, as a receiving core as a whole, with what Russell Wilson did, uh, that upped the bar a little bit. That upped the ante. And he's in a position now to where he can take advantage of that and go out there and uh, make some money. And he hasn't made that much. You remember, he's an undrafted yeah. um, player. So right. He never made a lot of money in the league, right? So now's his chance. He should oh. he should take advantage of it. I wish him the best. Oh, I do too. Um, last one, Will. Okay. Truth or bullcrap? The Seahawks will pick an offensive lineman with their first round pick of the 2016 draft. Um, ideally, that would be truth. Uh, in practice, I think that will be bullcrap. I'm not saying this because I I don't think the team is going to ignore the offensive line. Right. I think we're going to bring in a free agent or two. I think we're going to draft a couple. But John Schneider put it perfectly in, on the radio today. There are 30 teams that need offensive linemen. We're yeah. picking 26th. Yes. And if you yeah. pick an offense, if you go into the draft saying, I'm going to get a first-round pick, I'm going to get an offensive lineman with the first-round pick, come hell or high water, you're, you got some, you got that, the possibility of some good players at other positions going by. Yeah, this is a this is a good draft for interior defensive linemen. There could be a good good cornerback floating around out there. Yes, those are also positions that we need. So, yeah. Yeah. 
you you don't I, I honestly I don't think there's going to be a offensive lineman worth picking at that spot. There could be, um, but I think there also could be uh, another position that we need uh, a good player floating around out there. So yeah. I'm going to say, well, hopefully true, probably bullcrap. Probably bullcrap. Yeah, I go bullcrap too because you know this team they're probably going to trade out of the first round anyways. <laughs> <Not gonna. laughs> That's true. <laughs> Well, I tell you what, guys, and it's the truth. It is no bull crap. <clears throat> it, it is time to bring another wonderful and amazing 12th Man Fan Jam show to a side close. Uh, we are so glad you decided to waste some of the offseason with us. It was, as usual, a show that raised the bar here at the Seahawk Positivity YouTube channel. Uh, we certainly hope you laughed a little and maybe you learned a little something along the way. And what did we learn? Well, we learned that Percy Harvin is walking on broken glass. Uh, we learned that Denver likes to give low blows. Uh, we learned that there is a Patriot you can root for. We learned that Matt has plans for Cooper Helfit. Hmm. And Will has taught us spelling <laughs> it's more and of Moses. Cage. And we learned that Moses at least has a sack. So on behalf of my partner in crime, Matt, from Married Old England, our news hound, Shadowhawk Will, and Dustin as the beaver, and of course, Statsman Mark, appearing through the magic of the recorded voice. This is your self-appointed Reverend Moses of the St. Paul Allen Church of Seahawk Positivity saying, enjoy the off-season? And no matter if it's off-season, on-season, every season, go Hawks! Go Hawks! Go Hawks! Go Hawks! Miss you, Mark! I have a sack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>